Hello everybody, my name is Christian, but some of you know that already. Uh, I'm here today to showcase a fire monk that I have created all by myself. That's right, like a big boy. I have finally made a T6 fire monk that I think can, it, it very well can wreck T6. Um, I wouldn't necessarily call it competitive in the Greater Rift uh, arena, but if you're looking for a different build to play other than the Sun Wuku build, or maybe even if you're playing a Tempest Rush build and you wanted to, you know, spice things up a bit, this would be an awesome way to do that while still playing Monk and doing a lot of damage. So let's get right into it. Not going to waste any time here. We're going to start with the most important part of the of the build, which is the weapon. This is a bell build. That's right. It's a fire bell build, and uh, I'll explain in 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 this video how we are going to make this work. First of all, we need a incense torch of the Grand Temple. This is the key to the build. Um, some of the pieces I'm going to tell you can be replaced with whatever you like. Um, this, however, I, I'm willing to say is non-negotiable, as if if you don't have this, the build is really going to suffer. It is still possible to play this build without this weapon, but your spirit costs are going to be much higher. So this would be my step number one for you guys. Is to find an instance of the instance torch at the Grand Temple, excuse me, and try to get as much damage on it as possible. If you have a gift and you really want to go hard and deep on this build, then throw a gift on it. But uh, this is step one to find this. And if you'll notice, I'm also running a four piece of the Inna set with the helm, belt, and pants. Um, these are just the pieces that I chose to run. There's also a chest piece. Um, but I wanted my chest to be a center coat because this is a fire build. So that's why I'm running that. Uh, for boots, I decided to go with ice climbers. They're just really good. You can't get jailed. You can't get frozen. You still take damage from those things, but you still, you're not being immobilized. So that's nice. For our gloves, we decided to go with a pair of mage fists. I've, I've actually had these for a very long time. And this is uh, really what you want on mage fists. You know, crit chance, crit damage, attack speed. Attack speed is pretty important for this build. It's not mandatory like the weapon. It is just very strong in this build. The more attack speed, the more bells you can drop, etc. Um, if you if you are playing Sun Wuko, then you can use the Sun Wuko two piece. Uh, you don't need four pieces, so you, you don't need to get you can get that out of your head. Um, and I wouldn't actually recommend using four piece. I wouldn't even recommend it, and I'll explain why. The four-piece Sun Wuko says, Spending 75 spirit causes a decoy to spawn that taunts nearby enemies and then explodes for 3,500% weapon damage as holy. Well, there's the issue in itself. There's actually two problems with that. One, we're not holy. So the damage that's dealt is going to be high, but it's not going to be as high as if we were holy. And also, spending 75 spirit. Um, the point of this build is to get our resource costs really, really low. So the... Spending 75 spirit takes a lot longer than it would if we had no resource reduction. And I decided to go with the, the shoulders and the amulet. My amulet is not the best. I haven't had good luck finding an amulet. So if you have a, a very strong Sunwoko amulet, uh, you might even be able to get more damage out of this build. And I encourage that. For our helm, we just went with the Innis helm. Uh, CC reduction, max spirit. This one's actually, this is probably the best one I've found. Um, it's actually not that bad. For the chest, we went with the center coat. 20% fire skills, dex, vit, three sockets, life after kill, you know, and then it also rolls resource costs, resource cost reduction, I'm sorry, for fire skills, and that is also important. Uh, for our braces, one with reaper's wraps, there is also the option of running strong arms. You can run strong arms with this build because uh, I'll go over in the skills, we run cyclone strike, so that counts as a knockback in which it would make them suffer X, you know, X percent more damage. Um, however, I find that Reaper's Apps, getting that spirit back when you hit a health globe, is pretty, is really, really nice. Let's see, so our belt is just a standard in its favor, life after kill, you know, just best we could find there. And our pants as well, just Dex Vit, Armor, Poison Resist, uh, life after kill. <clears throat> it's very, very nice. Let's go over our rings. We are running a Ring of Grandeur. Uh, it's very important to get our four-piece uh, in us. That's literally the only thing we need it for. 
for this build. So if you wanted to maybe not run a center coat and run that actual four piece and say you have a Stone of Jordan or something like that you wanted to throw in there, by all means, do that. Um, in fact, you could swap out the center coat for a Fire Damage SOJ and probably do quite well. Um, but this one, we have <coughs> Dexterity, Attack Speed, and Crit Chance in a Natural Socket with a Secondary Resist. So this one actually rolled really nice for us. And I'll go over the Legendary Gems as well. So in this one, we're running Bane of the Trapped. And we're running Bane of the Trapped because we have Cyclone Strike, which pulls enemies to us. When they get pulled to us, they start taking this, as long as you have it at uh, level 25, they start taking the movement speed, I'm sorry, movement speed uh, decay, in which allows you to deal 20, for me at least, 23.7% more damage. And then if you add strong arms on top of that, it's actually a lot more damage. And then on my other hand, I guess my other ring, I'm running a unity. This ring is pretty just whatever you want. I like a unity. I just really prefer unity. I like the uh, CC reduction of this one in particular. Um, you can't always go, you know, the unity on your follower, unity on yourself method and do quite well. Um, this one, I've actually tried a lot of different gems in this spot. I tried Gem of Efficus Toxin, um, Taeguk, um, Gogok of Swiftness. I've tried a lot, but I found that Bane of the Powerful, giving that 20% flat damage increase for a long a period of time, plus the damage against elites, is really, really nice. So I think that about covers all the gear. So let's look at the let's look at our stats here. 20% um, damage increased by skills, which is the 20% from here. 30% damage to elites. Tax per second is 1.43. Tax speed increase is only 24%. Like I said, you don't need to really prioritize attack speed. However, if you have a lot of it, I recommend using it. With the monk, you want to have at least 40% crit chance, so I have 42 and a half. Ideally, you want to maintain a 10 to 1 ratio of crit damage to crit chance. I unfortunately cannot make that happen right now. Um, so if I had crit chance on this, obviously I'd be a little bit higher. Like I said, if you have a really nice amulet, then you're probably going to be doing quite well. Area damage 50, those are our Paragon points. Our fire damage is increased by uh, 57%. And personally, if I'm, running a f if I'm running an elemental damage, I like to run at least 60% of that element. Like if I'm running holy, lightning, fire, physical, whatever. I prefer to have at least 60% before I even consider it an option. Um, ways you can do that is you can get 20% on your bracers. You can actually get 20% on your amulet as well. And then you could also, usually there's some sort of something or another that gives, excuse me, that gives damage. Uh, whether it be an SOJ, which are always going to roll, not necessarily always, but that can roll an elemental damage, or whether it be like a Thunder God's Vigor or Mage Fist or something along those lines to give you extra damage. Um, wave of Light increase is 30%. This comes from our weapon. And Sweeping Wind damage, um, because we are using Firestorm, which gives it a bigger AoE, that's coming from our shoulders. So all reses are just over 1,000. This is coming from the Mantra of Salvation, uh, formerly known as Mantra of Evasion. Um, 17,000 armor, 70% CC reduction. This I just got kind of lucky on. I got 40 on my helm and 27 over here. So CC reduction is just something I really, really like, especially in a monk. It's quite strong. Um, scrolling down here a little bit. Life is at 514,000. Um, if you if you are comfortable with your life, you could maybe put a cooldown gem in here for maybe Epiphany and Dash. Um, <clears throat> But cooldown gem wouldn't really make a win. It's not really useful other for other, anything other than epiphany. Um, life per second, 16,000 coming from, uh, where is it, Mantra of Healing, plus our, our Paragon points. Life per hit, 24,000. Most of that's coming from our weapon. I think we have 4,000 in our Paragon points. Life per kill, 15,000 coming from our pants, belt, and chest. That's all coming from right there. Uh, no life steal because life steal doesn't work at level 70. Life per spirit spent is very important. Um, it's one of the most underrated healing methods for any character, and for monk especially, since we like to use spirit, it is extremely powerful. Uh, healing glow bonus 22,000. Not really anything important. Um, scroll down here to spirit 293 spirit, and I have the the default two per second regen, and then spirit cost reduction 16.3%. This is what you want to focus on, folks. If you can get gear, like if these had, 
if that attack speed was like resource cost reduction, that'd be awesome. Unfortunately, it just rolled attack speed. I've had these for a long time, like I said, so it's not a big deal. Uh, I was able to get resource cost reduction on my shoulders, which are amazing. So anywhere you can get resource cost reduction, I suggest you do so. Move speed 25, everything else is normal. So let's look at the skills. Excuse me. Uh, our primary, our left click, is crippling away with... Bleh, sorry. Crippling wave with mangle. Uh, just makes it fire damage. Our dashing strike, our right click, is way of the falling star. Uh, you could use any of these you'd like. Uh, some, somebody asked me why I wasn't using radiance. And I said... Through my testing, the movement speed you get from uh, Dashing Strike is just really, really nice. Um, the first thing you might notice when you look at these is I don't have a mantra. That's because I wanted Epiphany. I wanted Inner Fire. Um, assaults your enemies for 353% weapon damage as fire. I really, really wanted that when I was putting this build together. And that's another reason I decided to go with the Innas, is because I thought to myself, well, if I can't have an active... Why not have all four passives? While Mantra of Retribution really is rather poor, uh, still better than not having anything. Um, on our W is Cyclone Strike with Sunburst. Uh, fire damage does really good damage. Um, so it pulls a lot of enemies to you. And it really it procs your, your Bane of the Trapped and a bunch of other stuff. Main damage dealer is um, Wave of Light, Explosive Light. Um, it deals 830% as fire in a, you know, I'll stand over here, in a wave, in a big AoE. And it's actually not a AoE. It actually goes wherever the uh, outbursts are. So if you look, first of all, you see that it's hardly taking any spirit. If I go 160, it's about 27 spirit per bell. That's really good. Um, if you look, there's like these gaps in between the actual people and things will not get hit in that so keep that in mind um, for our constant damage we are running sweeping one with firestorm uh, just does good damage you know burns procs everything it's really nice our passives here determination I love this passive especially with cyclone strike cyclone strike and this are are just two peas in a pod they go really well together we cyclone strike you pull enemies in if you have you know, five enemies near you, that's 20% extra damage. That's awesome. Plus they're taking 20% or however, 20x% percent extra from the Bane of the Trapped as well. Um, <clears throat> CZ Initiative. I, I know I said attack speed is not important on this build. Well, it sort of is and sort of isn't. Um, CZ Initiative is still a really strong passive to run. Because you pull them in, you auto attack once, and that gives you that three seconds of attack speed to bell, bell, bell. Usually they're dead. Transcendence. Love this passive. Like I said, life per spirit spent is severely underrated. If you can, get some health glow bonus. Get that spirit per life per spirit spent even higher. And then Harmony. Big fan of one with everything. Um, Harmony is just really, really good. And this, instead, is kind of like the opposite of one with everything. One with everything, we wanted to stack one resistance. Just a lot. With this, we want to stack a bunch of resistances. So that's all nice. So that's the build. Let's go into our Paragon points. We'll start at core. Max out movement speed. Take a look at your boots. See if they have movement speed. Uh, if not, pump it to 25. Keep in mind, I have 519 Paragon points. Uh, I suggest you put them wherever you where, wherever you can. Um, I decided to split Dex and Vit here. Go 200, 200. Uh, just to get some extra life. So if you go into offense, um, I maxed out crit chance and crit damage. Like I said, cooldown is not super important. Uh, crit chance, probably you want to do crit damage first, and then crit chance, and then attack speed. Alright, so now we're in the defense. I decided to split these once again. After I max out all res, I decided to split 40 and 40 into life and armor. Just an extra 20% on both. If you're low on either or, you can put them all into one. Uh, but that's just what I personally decided. Uh, so utility, automatically, you want to shove everything you can into resource cost reduction. Uh, that's a big part of the build. After that, I just decided to go area damage. I didn't go life on hit after this because our weapon has 20,000 on it. So I decided to go resource cost reduction, area damage, then life on hit. So that is the gear, the build, the paragon points. 
So I guess now there's nothing left to do but jump out somewhere and showcase a little bit. Let's go. We'll just go to the Halls of Agony. It's really easy, simple place to farm. Uh, let me go ahead and turn the volume down just a little bit here. So one interesting thing about the build, guys, is the three-piece Innas automatically makes sweeping wind cost uh, remove 70 spirit from the cost. And we have so much resource cost reduction that, folks, it is literally free. Like, we can hit R as many times as we want, and it will never take a spirit. So there is literally no reason to never not have this up. So we're going to try to find some enemies here. We can pull them, then we just drop a couple bells. We can keep pulling, drop some more bells. We're getting good crits. Like I said, if you have more damage or less damage, you can, uh, you know, do whatever you want. So we're going to hit Epiphany here, that way we can try to kill these elites a little bit faster. And with the increased spear regen from Epiphany, we can actually just spam bells and uh, just make sure we keep getting our damage out. So that's what I'm saying. The uh, attack speed isn't necessary, but the more attack speed you have, the more bells you can drop. So We bring these enemies in, get a damage buff, Cyclone Strike. Ha, a vicious strike. Let's go ahead and drop these. Not enough spirit, I understand. So if you really wanted to, you could just auto-attack. I mean, you could still auto-attack and do a bunch of damage. Like, I'm just auto-attacking through these skeletons. They're really not even a hassle. And our since our, our main is fire damage, it still is going to do a lot of damage. So here I hit Epiphany, and as you can see, I can kind of just, just keep constantly dropping bells. I want to make sure I dash out of the Molten. And I could just keep dropping bells, and my... My fire guy, my epiphany, you know, will keep assaulting enemies. So this is the build, guys. It's really fun. It's really, really good in parties. Uh, if you're in a party, I'd recommend running the strong arms. Um, and another thing, if you're at distance from the enemy, like say they're like arcane enchanted, everything else, you don't want to get too close, um, you can hit them with your bells from far away. Um, the bell is sort of ranged. So you can... It'll go wherever your cursor is. See, if my cursor's on this skeleton right here. I can still drop a bell on him from way over here. So that's one thing to keep in mind in case you guys are... Um, in case you don't want to get too close to things. However, keep in mind that the crit will be a little bit lower because you're not getting that bait of the trap damage uh, from it. But uh, that's the build, guys. We, we killed a couple elites, and we killed a couple trash. A little bit of trash, and uh, I was able to show you guys the build, the gear, the Paragon points. Have any questions? Be sure to comment them. Um, I do stream. I'm actually going to stream right after I make this video. I'll put the stream link in the description if you'd like to hang out. Uh, I welcome you. We play a lot of different classes. I do play. I made a monk, but I, I'm starting to get into a witch doctor and a crusader a little bit. So I welcome everyone who wants to come join me. But uh, that is it, guys. It's that simple. A build is that good. And uh, your friends will love you because it doubles as a pool monk. So that's, that's the bill, guys. Thank you for watching, and I hope to catch all of you on the flip side.